Frank Isola joins us now at the Frank Isola. Frank, uh, I, I was just asking a question. I don't know uh, if you saw it. I also just tweeted it out to allow you guys to vote out there in the uh, the general public and the OutKick crew. We heard so much about how it was unsafe to play college football and, oh, my God, what are they doing? How could they possibly do this? And now college basketball is set to tip off next week. And I haven't heard a single word from anybody about it being unsafe to play college basketball. And many of these teams are not only playing, obviously, they're playing indoors and they're going to have fans present indoors. So people were all like, oh my God, how are they going to play football outdoors with crowds? And then they're saying nothing at all about college basketball. Now I'm in favor of all sports being played and finding a way to do it. But why do you think the story is not even being discussed for college basketball? Maybe because one is a little bit more popular than the other. And I also think the big thing with the NCAA in terms of college basketball is to get that uh, NCAA tournament off the ground. Yep. Because remember last year, everything shut down March 11th, so they didn't have a contingency plan. They lost so much money. I had heard from somebody, I mean, even Mike Krzyzewski said it, but I had heard from people that had spoken to people over at the NCAA, they said there is no way that we are not having this tournament this yep. year. That's why you've already heard them come out, right, and say... To their credit, will be yeah. In one, in one location in Indianapolis, there's too much money involved. That's why I don't even think they care how many games these guys play whether it's 15, 20, 25, whatever the case may be, they want to get that tournament going. I think there's so much stuff going on right now that maybe it is kind of floating under the radar. Because remember, Clay, by now the college basketball season already would have started in a normal year. Yeah, I just think it's wild that we had such a huge debate. Like, I had to fight tooth and nail in order for the college football season to happen, and I felt like every day was a knife fight on social media <laughs> with uh, with all these people trying to, you know, myocarditis or, you know, we just mentioned, like, uh, Dennis Dodd wrote this histrionic column about how, how many college football players were going to die if they actually played the season, and it's obviously been proven so far – to be total a total joke, like the, the fact that that was ever written. And so I'm just kind of fascinated by that in general. So I'm going to open up phone lines and actually let people weigh in, I think, in the next hour. But I um, uh, appreciate you getting up early with us. Did you watch the draft last night? And if so, how much interest did you have in it? I know you're an old-school NBA guy. Um, I, you know, We were talking about this off the jump. A lot of the guys we just don't know and or didn't get to watch play in the NCAA tournament. So... It felt, uh, in many ways, sort of anticlimactic uh, compared to the usual NBA draft. Absolutely, because the first guy taken played one year, um, Anthony Edwards Wiseman, who was taken second when he played two games in Memphis, and we all knew who Lamelo Ball was, but for probably all the wrong reasons, we never really got to see him play. He played in Lithuania, in Australia, and also too, what you know, there's a lot of things that hurt the NBA draft, and you just mentioned it. One of them, the idea that we haven't seen these guys since March, they didn't get an NCAA tournament. But the NBA has allowed trades to begin on Monday, and free agency begins on Friday. And that always is going to take precedent over the draft. I get that fans love the draft. Every fan thinks that, you know, well, we're getting a young player. This automatically means he's going to become a good player. Just go back five years and type in, you know, the 2015 NBA draft. And go look through the players. You'll say, oh, he's good, not good, not good, out of the league. You know, so everyone goes crazy over the draft because they auto- it gives people hope, and that's what people yeah. like having. But uh, to me, the bigger news, obviously, was Clay Thompson, the Philadelphia 76ers making the trades that they made. There were a lot of trades that happened yesterday, and those are going to be bigger. The, the first pick was about to happen, and Jay Billis, I thought he was pretty funny last night because he was, you know, he was saying, hey, well, if I'm Minnesota, you consider trading down. I'm thinking, well, how good can the draft be if the team that has the first yeah. pick? They're already saying maybe you should consider trading down. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, we're talking to Frank Isola. What, uh, by the way, do you think or are you hearing about Clay Thompson? Because that's the b- a much bigger news. If he suddenly was out for another season, that would be brutal for the Warriors who picked second overall and uh, otherwise seem pretty excited to take James Wiseman. But that's a that's a body blow right before the draft. Well, they, they gave the hockey terminology, right, that it's a lower leg injury. What does that mean? Like, if people had his Achilles, you kind of know that as soon as it happens. Yeah. So, the, you know, they're, we're hearing reports that it could be that, but that the Warriors are hopeful that maybe it's not that bad. I remember Patrick Ewing a million years ago suffered a partially torn Achilles, but, you know, he didn't go deep. He was hurt and he was limping. This It, it does, seem, unfortunately, it does seem like it's probably the worst-case scenario for Clay Thompson, who not only is a terrific player, he's a terrific guy. He's everything that you'd want in a professional basketball player, a professional athlete in general. 
and it's going to be tough. I mean, let's face it, that's minimum an eight an eight month injury. So he's not you're not going to see him for this season. Clay, he hasn't played just like Kevin Durant. Neither of these guys have played since June of 2019. It's amazing. Yeah. So now you might not see Clay Thompson until October of 22, believe it or not. Yeah, it's awful uh, for for the Warriors if that ends up happening. Yeah. Um, Speaking of Kevin Durant, there is you're up in New York, and there is the rumor that James Harden may be going to the Brooklyn Nets to join forces with Kevin Durant and uh, with Kyrie Irving. Do you think that happens? I don't think it does. I mean, if you're the Houston Rockets, you know, the players that they, they would get back would be guys like Spencer Dinwiddie, Karras, LeVert, Jared Allen. Those, those are very good role players. But, you know, you're going to lose a lot of games in the West. You already traded away your draft pick. So if you lose in the Western Conference, Oklahoma City is going to be the beneficiary of that. So I would think if I'm the Rockets, I have to show something. You know, that's why I would try to hold out and see if I can get Ben Simmons from the Philadelphia 76ers. Daryl Morey obviously running Philadelphia. He'd like it. But Harden really is put. Um, the Rockets in a bad position here, you know, and this is where the NBA players a lot of times turn the fans off because one player can really determine the outcome of your season. It could, you know, you add one great player to your team, it changes everything. So here's Harden, who's got 131 million dollars coming to him over the next three years. He's the one that didn't want Chris Paul on the team, so they traded him. They traded away a lot of assets, and he wakes up one day and says, "Well, I don't want to play for you anymore." Yeah, really puts your team in a difficult position. It's just, it's just a bad look all the way around. Yeah, and especially if you're a fan in, in Houston who has invested a lot of time in a team that, let's be honest, has been pretty frustrating in the postseason, and you've spent a lot of time uh, you know, supporting James Harden, and then suddenly he just says, you know, I don't want to be here anymore. And as you mentioned, basically, if, if he doesn't want to be there anymore and they were to trade him, effectively the Rockets are just going back into full-on rebuild mode, right? I mean, yeah. they're going to go from a team that at least had an outside shot to potentially try and advance in the playoffs to a team that is trying to get the overall number one pick for potentially multiple years uh, to try to get back to being decent and, again. And, Clay, remember, too, when whenever they talk about player empowerment, you know, obviously the players love it, the agents love it, now even the media and the fans, I think it's the greatest thing that the players have all this power. Yeah, it's great to have the power because when things fall apart, you don't suffer the consequences. Yeah. For example, Kawhi Leonard you know, threw his weight around and he told the Clippers, I want Paul George to be here, so they mortgaged their future. They gave away all these draft picks to bring in Paul George. Look how badly he played. Yeah. Paul George was terrible in the bubble. Clay Thompson kind of disappeared a little bit too. And what happened? Doc Rivers lost his job. Now, the one guy where player empowerment has worked out, I don't have to always agree with it, but LeBron at least brings you to the finals, and chances are you might win. So he throws his weight around in L.A., you know, wants him to get Davis, they do, and they win it. So player empowerment, if I was a player, yeah, it's a great thing because when it doesn't work out, I'm the last one that gets blamed. Everybody else gets blamed. The coach is going to get blamed. The GM will get blamed, and, I'm, and I uh, move along scot-free. What would you think of Justin Herbert's haircut? <laughs> Do you ever Not have a really impressive. bad haircut in your life where you were like, man, this is a disaster? Of course. Yeah. Of course. And then the, you know what the barber tells you, right? Yeah. It's a little grow back. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, then, then you got to walk around with a hat for like a week. And then yeah. you gotta, and if you're a guy, now back, you know, you were allowed, believe it or not, Clay, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you were allowed to do this. You were allowed to make fun of people with a bad haircut. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. It wasn't bullying. You were just busting chops. That's yeah. what it was considered back then. Yes. And you would face a lot of that for a long time in school. That's for sure. Oh, I mean, uh, nowadays everything's offensive, yes. But, uh, but yes, the, the the bad haircut. I mean, I saw the Justin Herbert haircut, and I said, I don't know if I can support this guy for Rookie of the Year anymore. This was a, this was a bad decision. <laughs> I don't know if I, if I trust him as the face of the franchise after that haircut decision. Uh, <laughs> Frank, I saw anything big going on for you for the weekend? No, I'm uh, obviously the free agency is Friday. Yeah. And then what, what, what's the big college football game? Oh, I got to Northwestern. My son went to Northwestern, so I got to see Northwestern, Wisconsin. We'll yeah, it's a big Northwestern game. Is and then crazily, that. Indiana, Ohio State's kind of a big game uh, as well uh, going oh, forward. Oh, and Indiana, that, that's an excellent one. Yeah. How, how, about Michigan, how about Michigan State? Michigan State got kind of smoked at home by both Rutgers and Indiana. Yeah. Yeah, they're in a rough spot, and they beat Michigan, which is still maybe the most surprising uh, outcome of all of those uh, to see exactly where they are. Uh, good stuff as always, Frank Isola. We will talk to you next week. All right, Clay, thanks.
That's Frank Isola at the Frank Isola. When we come back, uh, I'll uh, re update you. I got put a poll question up about that college basketball question I was asking. We'll also open up phones, 877-996-6369. Why do you think everybody's just shutting up about the fact that college basketball is starting after all the battles to try to keep college football from happening? It's really fascinating. This is OutKick on Fox Sports Radio. 